So, Ryan, hello, welcome to Christmas catch up. You all good? Yeah, yeah, all good here. Just uh, working away and uh, heard you wanted to catch up, and I was like, absolutely. I haven't seen John in a while. I know we kind of haven't seen anybody in a while, that, but when it doesn't look like this, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Funny well, times, well, bad vaccine, times. No, apparently, so. Well, you know, we can only hope that, you know, when we're having a conversation in a few months that I'll, I'll be saying to you that was a good gig last night where there was an audience or whatever. Speaking <laughs> of which, um, 27th, is it? Uh, Ulster Hall, this is going to be iconic. I know there's not going to be an orchestra, but just to stand on that stage, you could, you could make this very special, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of strange. No audience is just kind of, it's surreal, but I was there the other day to do a promo for it. And, um, well, I just standing on that stage and singing. I could have stayed there all day, but I thought I would save it. But yeah, the 27th, you can get the tickets online. It's, it's a streamed gig, but it's, it's the Sunday after Christmas. What else would you be doing but sitting in and watching TV? Yeah. And some people I've spoken to, I mean, obviously it's no substitute for the real thing, but it's great that these streaming gigs are on. It's some kind of connection. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I remember at the very start, I was kind of dubious about this. You know, I find it very strange talking to people yeah, like this um, sure. and then doing gigs this way. I thought it was very strange, but then it all of a sudden became normal. And now I'm kind of excited to see what the first gig with audience will be like, um, yeah. just to get that back, you know. We were talking before, I remember at the start of lockdown, we chatted and I seem to remember that you were um, sanded down a picnic table. Do you remember that? <laughs> remember yes. that for some reason? But we were also saying that, you know, it's a time maybe to kind of, you know, to start writing and all the rest and to, and to sort of lock yourself away. But at the same time, I don't want every artist I like to be bringing out a lockdown album. Do you know what I mean? I, w- I want some sort of positivity to come out of it. That's it. It's There's a fine line there, isn't there? Um Certainly, we should all be documenting our experiences, especially, you know, writers and stuff. We should be writing about it. But I'm kind of with you on that where, I mean, I have written a couple of songs. I actually released a song recently that was a lockdown song. But yeah, I've, I've kind of steered away from writing too many of them because I like to think of positive uh, music more so than anything. And yeah, I can't find a lot of positives in this past. Of year. course. It's like giving it a bit back, you know, on the radio, for example, if it's a question of me playing something slow and melancholy, I'll, I'll, I'll opt for the faster, happier song. It's almost like a bit of, it's like a bit of revenge, you know, trying to bring it in the other way. Yeah, that's it. It's whatever we can do to get back at it. That would be great. Oh, of course, yeah. Have you been staying in touch with, with everybody? You know, I mean, I know Gary Lightbody and you're good mates. How's Gary getting on? Do you know what? I actually haven't spoke to him once, if I'm being honest. Uh, right. He seems to be... He's got loads going on, and I'm sure he's great. Actually, just as you say that, I actually might reach out later tonight yeah. and just, just send an email to be like, hey, how's it going? Of um, course. You know, and it's, it's of no fault of Gary's either. It's really it's really my own. I've, I've kind of turned into a bit of a recluse in this whole yeah. thing. I've, I've you know, only left the house when I've needed to, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a strange thing, but I hope everybody's doing well if, if any of them see this. I love you. So I hope you're doing well. <laughs> well, that's it. And you? it is it. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. What about you? Have you seen anybody, or is there anybody that you haven't seen in a while that you're kind of going? Yeah. Oh, I have to spoke to them, and I really should. A lot of people. It is. It's funny. I was talking to someone about this the other day on Zoom, and it, it really is like sort of you feel this need to really reconnect with people as well. You know, it's that sort of thing. You think to yourself that night someone said, we're all going here for a drink and you didn't go. <laughs> you regret it now. You can, you sort of want to go everywhere and, yeah. and reach out to people that you haven't in a, in a long time. And I think, I think friendships will in many ways might have been strengthened by now. You know, good people will always uh, stay in touch with people who make their lives a bit better. And when we all get out there again, can you imagine? I mean, on the subject what I was talking about earlier as well at the start of lockdown, we also said after the picnic table story, that whenever this is all okay again, hopefully, that Belfast City, your song, has to lead the charge. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's kind of strange is now more than ever, I see people asking for that song to be played. Um, we did a video on the top of the OES Center whenever yeah. it was like peak lockdown and, you know, there was about 10 cars on the road and there's a shot that the drone comes up and looks out and you're just looking at Belfast quiet and it's like, Oh my goodness, it's so strange to see Belfast like that because normally you know what it's like. You know, people are yeah. everywhere and everybody's up for a good time, but this was just a surreal time. But yeah, I mean, 
as soon as we can, let's have a night out in Belfast City. <laughs> exactly. And I think, you know, you can nearly do that. Now you can try and break some kind of record. The first night of whatever normality is at that time, you could go into every bar and cathedral quarter and perform it and just keep going <laughs> and see how many you can do. See how many we can do in Belfast. Hey, I'd yeah. be up for that. If, if, all I would ask is a pint in every bar. We'll do the 12 pubs of Christmas. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's a good call. Exactly. So tell me the song then with the Ulster Orchestra. Uh, it's very emotive. It, it, it was really, really strong, powerful stuff. It must have been an amazing thing to record. Uh, so whenever the orchestra got involved, I was so excited. But <clears throat> it was the first time I'd really heard live music in months. And it wasn't like hearing one guitar or one voice. It was hearing 40 instruments all yeah. at once. It was so overwhelming. It was really just something beautiful. I'm so glad that I got to experience it. But also, I think it really adds to the song. And thanks so much to the, the orchestra and Paul Campbell for what they did. It was truly astonishing. I saw um, Biffy Claro did an amazing thing recently. I think it might even have been Abbey Road where they did, you know, one of their songs with a full orchestral <laughs> backup. And in the same way, you know, yourself, when, when a song is stripped down acoustically, it can be great. But there's something about that orchestra. It just creates something entirely different. Oh, it's just, it just resonates with the soul. You know, it's the frequencies that it produces. It mm. just resonates with the soul. And that's why I think we all get so <clears throat> overwhelmed whenever we hear strings and orchestras because they just, you know, music is for the soul and it's pretty yeah. much just a, a wee bam on the soul just to say, here you go, bit of smoothness. It's so human, isn't it? Those are the most human kind of instruments in, in many ways. You know, the, every instrument, whether it's like, whether people are working on their laptop or, you know, a saxophone, it all counts, of course, but there's something very special about that. When I watch the video and listen to the song, there's a comment I always hear about you and it makes me laugh. I wonder if you heard it, where people go, do you see that Rand McMullen song? If that had been written by Ed Sheeran, it'd be number one for 10 weeks. Well, I mean, I, I, that that and that's enough for me. I mean, obviously having a number one for 10 weeks would be incredible, but <laughs> right. people think... If people think the songs are that high caliber, then that's that's why I make music. It's not for to have loads of, you know, stuff around the house. It's really just for people to connect with it all. So whoever's saying that, thank you very much. And hopefully, <laughs> one, day, hopefully one day, yeah, hopefully one day we'll have a song that everybody hears in the charts and we go, oh, there it is. Finally, we got one. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and Ed, of course, has, has been really good to you uh, over the years. And, you know, it's, it's been a great level or two. I mean, he's in the same situation as, as you are there now and me sitting here. And he's, he's probably creating some stuff as well. He was due the break, uh, uh, as you know, but I'm sure he hasn't been able to stop writing at the same time. Well, he had a baby, so I'd say mm. that'll be taking up a lot of his time. You know? <laughs> That's um, true too. But he, uh, yeah, he's just a machine. He will write so I don't I don't think he could ever switch that songwriting thing off. He's so yeah, he's just unbelievably driven and focused on music. You know, it's it's really it's very admirable. Big question: What are you getting for Christmas? What are the plans? <laughs> um, getting by, I think. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get. Um, it's kind of I kind of find Christmas a funny one for getting gifts because. I all I ever want is stuff to record music and to write music and you know instruments, but they're all kind of business expenses for me, so nobody ever buys them for me. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So I guess do you know what I'd love this year? And I know this is very typically Irish of me. A real pint of Guinness. Oh yeah. Like I'm hoping that I can just get oh, a pint yeah. of Guinness. Uh oh, that would be something. What about you? I know, you and that's not a bad call. Actually, I know exactly what you mean. Just that actual yeah. stand up at a bar and the wet's poured and watch it being poured. Oh, and then the second pour. Oh, <laughs> yes. You know, if Guinness happened to be watching this now, I mean, you know, we can give you Ryan's address at the end. Guinness, you know, yeah. and mine too, if you don't mind. But that, that's a good shout. And in many ways, it's kind of the, the simplistic things that are going to mean so much. So I know what to get you. I'm going to get you a pint of Guinness as opposed to a Steinway piano. Is that all right? Exactly. Yeah. And I'd probably <laughs> thank you more for it, to be honest, at this point in time. That's it. And what about Christmas in general? Memories of it over the years as a kid? Are you a Christmassy person? Some people aren't. Yeah. Well, my birthday's the week before. So it's such a, I love that time of year. I love birthdays and I love Christmas. So um, we just kind of always have a good time. And I mean, 
but the thing is, it's always about family and friendship. And this year, yeah. it might just have to look a bit different. But I'm happy to sacrifice one year if it means I can have another 50 with them, you know. So Of course. Um, and, you know, I, I think as well, you know, there's always some presents that stand out when you were a kid that, that mean a lot. Mine were always like sort of football games or something or, or albums, obviously. Any standout presents from your childhood? Yeah, uh, I've got one where... I mean, I've got loads of standout ones, but this story just makes me laugh every time I hear it. But one year, my brother and I asked for snooker cues uh, and proper snooker cues, you know, like that you go and play on the big tables with. And that was all we wanted. And we came down the stairs and my dad had wrapped these these cues, but he had and we opened them. But there were these small pull cues that are only about, you know, three foot. Yeah. And we were aging and he had them wrapped right up, you know, as if they looked like they were five foot. And then. we were gutted and he kept laughing and kept saying to us, go and make us a cup of tea. And we were like, no, like you got us the worst cues ever. Like no chance of you making you a cup of tea. Get your own tea. And make a cup of tea for him. So he had to actually just give in and say, look, there's a present in the kitchen for you if he's cool and make us a cup of tea. So we ran out and there they were, you know, but that was our snooker cues. Yeah. yeah. And really you still, you still play? Yeah. Yeah. Play, pull more so now than snooker, but, um, uh, I'd love to get, I mean, uh, we're not even allowed to at the minute, sure we're not, is it? Yeah, that's it. So, well, I'm thinking again, when if things hopefully go back to normal, that's another night, a night in Laveries with Guinness and Game of Pool. Oh, here, you're just, you're just setting up the perfect night. Just we're fantasy stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what we should do to wrap up? Look, by the way, happy Christmas to you and the family, Ryan, and we'll catch up, as I say, soon, but... Um, maybe you should play us out with a bit of Belfast City, just just even a verse and a chorus. Do you fancy Belfast doing that? City. Yeah, uh, let me just the guitar's in a random tuning. Uh, let me see what I can do with this. I didn't even think about Belfast City. Get to see a musician properly at work right now, everybody. This is what's yeah. going on. It's beautifully my, live. Yeah. My head is going 90 right now, just trying to get this done as quick as possible. Get the tune in done. Uh, to remember it. I'll be on my way, leaving West LA at sunrise. The time's been great. I kind of wish that I could stay for a little while. Perfect. Lovely way to end. Happy Christmas, Ryan McMullen. Yes, you too. Merry Christmas.